Hi everyone, and today I'm going to walk you through the ATP section of the Bio Biological Molecules Unit for AQA A-Level Biology. I'll also be going through a few exam style questions related to the topic and their mark schemes, as I know from experience that the mark schemes can be very strict. Also, I'll be leaving timestamps in the comments section if you just want to skip to the relevant section that you want to revise. Right, so let's get started. So the first thing that you need to know is about the structure of ATP itself. Now, as you can probably tell if you watched my last video, the structure of ATP is similar to an adenine nucleotide. And this is what we call ATP, a nucleotide derivative. It is very similar to an adenine nucleotide. So as you can see, we have, just get my pen out, an adenine group, so an adenine base a ribose group, which is a 5-carbon sugar, and 3 phosphates instead of 1, as you find in nucleotides. Hence the name adenosine triphosphate ATP. Now, you also need to know about ATP hydrolysis and synthesis. This is the equation that is absolutely essential to know. It often comes up in the exam. So ATP can be hydrolyzed, which is the forward reaction, to ADP, DP, which denotes adenosine diphosphate, which means that a phosphate is lost. Now we use the symbol PI for the phosphate instead of just P, because the phosphate here is inorganic. So the forward reaction is a hydrolysis reaction, which means the breaking of chemical bonds using water. So water isn't released, water is used. This is catalyzed by the enzyme ATP hydrolase. So the backward reaction is a condensation reaction obviously. So it's the formation of chemical bonds, in this case the formation of a phosphorester bond between ADP and the phosphate group form ATP, catalyzed by the enzyme ATP synthase. Now you'll learn more about ATP synthase in the A2 content in the respiration section. Now, as you can see here, this is a reversible arrow. This is one of the crucial adaptations of ATP. It can be rapidly resynthesized once it is broken down, which means it can be recycled for various and crucial bodily functions. Now another crucial thing that you remember and is a common theme throughout biology, is this phosphate group, the properties of it. Now this phosphate group can phosphorylate other compounds to make them more reactive, which is crucial in bodily reactions such as glycolysis, again, which you, you will learn more about next year. Now, you need to also know about the properties of ATP. The first property is that it releases a small amount of energy at a time. This is crucial as it avoids the death of cells through heat, as energy release sometimes is wasted as heat. This also means that the body must release a large, synthesize, synthesize a large amount of ATP to compensate for the fact that it only releases a small amount of energy at a time. Also, it cannot leave the cell. This is crucial as it allows the ATP to be constantly used for its various functions. It is also an immediate source of energy as the hydrolysis of ATP is a simple reaction as it only involves one step. Also, it is soluble, which is again very important. Now, that is actually it. That is all you need to know about ATP for the biological molecule section. So now we will get on to some exam questions. Now I'll just get out my highlighter. Oh, highlighter. So let's look at this one. ATP is an energy source used in many cell processes. Give two ways in which ATP is a suitable energy source for cells to use. So you need to suggest two properties of ATP that allow cells to carry out their functions. 
Now this is crucial here, the word cells. You don't need to give the properties that allow it to be useful in biological processes. You need to give examples as to how it helps the cell as a whole. So one thing we can put is that it doesn't leave the cell, so it can be constantly used. You don't need to provide an explanation as the question only says give. Another one you can put is that it releases energy instantaneously, as we can see by the equation in previous slides. So if we look at the mark scheme, it releases a relatively small amount of energy or little energy is lost as heat, which is something that I mentioned earlier that you could put that. But they say here the key concept is that little danger of thermal death of cells, which I mentioned earlier as well. It releases energy instantaneously, which we wrote to get one mark for that. Key concept is that energy is readily available, so you can write energy is readily available at it, as that is the same concept as this. Another point you could put is that it phosphorylates other compounds, so the phosphate released in the hydrolysis of ATP phosphorylates other compounds, making them more reactive. It can be rapidly resynthesized, and also it is not lost, as it does not leave cells, which we wrote. So we get the two marks. Now here it says two max, so if you put more than two, points here you don't get more than two marks you can only get a maximum of two so the next question write a simple equation to show how ATP is synthesized from ADP nice and easy ADP plus PI makes ATP be careful when getting the equation the right way around that said as it says here ATP from ADP oh that is so messy And also you don't need to write the reversible arrow here as it is only asking you for one of the reactions. So you, you only need to write it one way, one, one way. So the next part, give two ways in which the properties of ATP make it a suitable source of energy in biological processes. Now you're probably thinking this is the exact same as the first question that we looked at. However, that question referred to how it is useful for the cell as a whole. This question is asking us how it is useful for biological processes. So a property that we could put is that energy is released in small amounts. So you don't need to provide an explanation again, as it is only a give question, and not an explained question. And it involves a simple reaction, as it only involves a few, a couple of reactants and products. So if you look at the next part of the question, humans synthesise more than their body mass of ATP, I like that, there's a key point, each day. Explain why it is necessary for them to synthesise such a large amount of ATP. Now as this is an explained question, we need to write why something happens rather than just what happens. So this is what I have put. ATP is an immediate energy source, so it is used very quickly and it is released in small amounts. This obviously means that a large amount of ATP must be synthesised to compensate this property here that I've mentioned. So look at the mark schemes with these three questions. ADP plus PM is ATP, we wrote that. Now it says here for the, you can get the mark if both sides are correct but allow other recognised symbols or words for phosphate ion. So I think it might be Except for if you write the formula, the actual formula for phosphate, but it says reject P unless in a circle. As if you just wrote P without a circle, that would denote phosphorus instead of just phosphate. So you wouldn't get any marks if you wrote just P. And it says except equals as equivalent to an arrow, except reversible arrow, so it doesn't actually matter if you write the reversible arrow, but I would just recommend doing a single arrow. It says here, ignore any reference to kg, kg, kilojoules or water. So the next part of the question, energy released in small amounts, which we wrote. Soluble, you could put that as well, as that affects biological processes. And involves a single or a simple reaction, which we put as well. So we'll get two marks for that. Again, it says two marks, so if you put all four of not all four, all three of these points here, then you do not get three marks, you can only get a maximum of two. Now, 
it says here in context of release not storage so you can't put anything but ATP storage ignore producing energy such as manageable amounts so you don't get a mark if you put that now it says reject broken down easily slash readily and reject quickly slash easily resynthesized so if you put either one of these you don't get any marks at all for this question even if you put one of these two in your answer now you they reject normally reject these as it doesn't really provide a reference to biological processes it is kind of only relevant to the cell as a whole it's kind of confusion but you you will get the hang of it soon so the last part of the question a to b cannot be sourced slash is an immediate source of energy which we wrote and ATP only releases in a small amount of energy at a time, which we wrote as well. Now, this question here. Name the substance that the muscles use as their immediate energy source. That is a very easy question. Obviously, it's ATP. I'm not going to bother showing you the bark scheme as it just says ATP. Now, I think this is the last part of the question here. It's quite a tr tricky one as it involves not one but two graphs and quite a large chunk of text here. So let's read it. Sports scientists investigated the change in energy sources used during exercise. They measured the percentage of energy obtained from carbohydrate and the percentage of energy obtained from fat. Group A exercise through different intensities for the same time. Different intensity for the same time. Just highlight that. Group A. Group B exercise at the same intensity for different times. They calculated the intensity of the exercise as a percentage of VO2 max. VO2 max is the maximum volume of oxygen the athletes can take in per minute. The results for group A are shown in figure 1 and the results for group B are shown in figure 2 which is here. So let's go on to the question. Calculate the ratio of the percentage of energy from carbohydrate to the percentage of energy from fat when the intensity of exercise is 70% VO2 max. Show your working. Now, as this is a show your working question, one of the marks here comes from showing your working. Now, the working out must be correct in order for you to get this working out mark. So, if we look at the graphs, now this is quite tricky to see as a website that I got these questions from. It's not very high resolution, so I apologise for that. So if we find 70 VO2 max, which is around here, and we read up at this point here, if we read along yeah, it's this point here, now I've calculated that each of the mini squares represents 4, or 4%. So this value here is 28. So the value for fat is 28%. And if we look at carbohydrates, this mark here, if you read along. Now to make it easy, I'm just going to count back from 80. So two mini squares, so that is minus 8, so that makes 72. Now you could just leave a ratio as 72 to 28, whether that's is not ideal as they would like you to simplify it. So carbohydrates, the value was 72% and the value of fat was 28%. So what we do to sim simplify this is we make it as a ratio to one. So we divide these numbers by each other to get the value of 2.57. This means that for every carbohydrates, I mean for every fat, percentage we have 2.57 of carbohydrates so the answer here would be 2.57 to 1 at 70 percent vo2 max so if we look at the mark scheme 2.57 to 1 2.6 to 1 they allow you to round it up or 18.7 if you hadn't simplified it as far down as we have they also accept correct answer however derived scores two marks 72 to 28 scores one mark so no matter what working out you did you only get one mark if you don't simplify the ratio correct working from wrong figures scores one mark
So if you got them the wrong way around, you're, you can still get a mark. They also set these values as well for a mark. And it's two marks, so obviously, again, if you put any more than two points, you don't get three marks. You can only get a maximum of two. Now, this is the last question that we're going to look through today. A person wishes to lose some body fat by exercising. What sort of exercise would be most effective? Use the information in figures one and two to explain your answer. Now, as it is an explain question, you don't just write what you see, you explain why you see it or how it relates to the question. As it says, use information in figures one and two, you need to grab data from both figures to get marks, usually. I think this is a three mark question as well, which I have not shown you here, so three marks. Now, let's look at figure one, which is the intensity of exercise. Now, as you can see, more fat is used at a lower intensity, which is more useful for this person relating to the question. So we would write low intensity because fat is mainly used at low intensity. As you can see from the graph here, it is much higher fat usage than carbohydrate usage at low intensities. And also, if we look at figure two now, more fat is used when the exercise has lasted for longer. So more fat will be used at longer exercise points. So they, we will put exercising for a long time as fat used increases with time. This shows that we have used the graph as we have looked at the trends. Now, if you look at the mark scheme, low intensity. At low intensity, slash below 40%, so you can use the proper data points on the graph, mainly fat is used, which we wrote. Or you can put the converse so at a high intensity or above 40% mainly carbohydrate use. It doesn't matter which one of those you put. You just need to get the idea. And also long duration exercise is recommended, which we wrote as well. One mark, two marks. Percentage fat use increases with time, which we wrote as well. So we would get all three marks. And percentage carbohydrate use decreases with time. So they accept the converse. So you would get three marks for that question. Jolly good. Right, that is all I want to say. Please comment in the comment section below if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video where I'll talk about water.